give it a minute for a few people to come live before I start. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna um, allow anybody to comment. I'm not gonna be on here that long, so let me just go ahead and get started. Um, I'll praise the Most High Yah Elohim um, for His grace, mercy, and His love to us. Um, to the 12 tribes of Yasharel, um, scattered and not destroyed. Um, to the sovereign minds of our, of our brothers and our sisters moving in this movement to search for the truth and um, learn who they are in the Most High. Um, I send you greetings all the way from Forney, Texas. Um, I was just sitting here um, thinking the last couple of days and I've had some conversations with some of our um, our ox and our coatees in in the move in the in this in this in this movement and um, I just want to make a couple of statements first things first it is our duty as Yasharel First of all, to take our book back. Take our book back from the people who took it, corrupted it, and have taught from it and taught lies to our people. Our second step, once we um, take our book back, those that are awake need to be more understanding of those who are coming into the truth. Um, I wanted to say, as we move, or as we progress as a per people, I want you to realize we got to quit being hard on each other. Um, the progressive steps in this thing are very intimate and personal. And we, as Yasharel, have to realize that Yah, our Elohim, dealt with people individuals before he ever dealt with a nation. Let me repeat this so you can understand. Yah, our Elohim, dealt intimately with people before he ever dealt with Yasharel as a nation. This is very important. Because we seem to get into this vein or this train of thought that we want people to move at the speed that we move in. And honestly, it doesn't work that way. Um, I, I, I know this is going to sound weird to you, but I started to think. And um, I, I mean, I really was thinking about this hard. And I want you to realize when we come out of her, and, and this is a statement I don't like using, but when we come out of her, realize that we are going through a phase of cognitive dissonance. So we have to go through several steps of a mind altering evolution or paradigm shifts before the Most High can bring us completely out in our minds, in our hearts, in, in, in our body, and in our souls. So we progress at a certain rate as He deals with us. And we have this habit of super brews um, trying to rush the process, um, realize that you're being birthed into something. When you um, start this change, when you start walking in the truth of the Most High Yah, you are being birthed into another life. When um, Yahshua or Yahusha says that we first must be born again. You have to understand there is a period when we are in the womb 
that we have expanded in knowledge so much that this place of darkness can no longer hold us. And so we then struggle against that which has held us in for nine months or however long your your maturation period was before you started to come out. <clears throat> and it is almost like throes of labor to where you are contracting and pushing and squeezing against the forces that have held your mind captive for oh so long that when you finally get breached or when you finally begin to um what's that word when hold on excuse me excuse me when the baby's head begins to crown and this is the part where the inside world and the outside world become connected. And we as people that are awake in this must realize that the doctor, when he is birthing a child, he allows the mother's body to work and go its course. He may give drugs, he may do other things, but he allows the body to take its course. And this is a, 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 a symbiotic relationship between what was holding us in the darkness and now what we are trying to do with the light. Many of us have been birthed, pushed out into a world new to us, cold, wet, um, freezing, trying to acclimate to this change and to have, when I worked in labor and delivery, we tried to make the experience so warming and welcoming because we understood that there was going to be so much stimuli introduced to this child as it in, this newborn as it enters into our world from the world of its mother and so we try to reduce the stimulation and what we are doing now with our new people and people that we're bringing into this truth and people that are beginning to walk in this truth when they come out we stimulate them so much trying to get them up to speed that we end up either stunning their growth or causing them harm. As a teacher in this thing, I realize now why when Yasharel exited out of Egypt and made it across into the Sinai Desert and across into Saudi Arabia to where Mount Sinai truly is, that when the Most High was sitting on the mountain waiting for them and he introduced himself to the people after their purification period, that everybody... And one of the sisters and I were discussing this the other day. Everybody was supposed to go up on the mountain. But because of their fears and because of the stimulation and all the stuff that they had gone through being birthed out of Egypt or out of Mizraim into, into the Arabian desert to Mount Sinai, to the precipice of where the Most High was, that their fears and the tension of this birthing process prevented people from going up the mountain. Matter of fact, they wouldn't even move. They wouldn't even budge. They just surrounded the mountain. And so the, the priesthood or the, the elders went up a, a portion of the way <clears throat> with Moshe. But he even had to leave them down 
because they could not understand or be in the presence of the Most High Yah. And so you have to understand when you're being birthed out of this, you are receiving stuff from the Ruach. You are gaining knowledge each day as you travel and make this journey as you're birthing through the birth canal. But when you come out, you're not always ready to go up before the Father. And so we as brothers and sisters in this walk, in this walk of truth, we got to quit trying to make people ascend, ascend to places that they're not equipped to go. You understand that Moshe dealt with the Most High several different times before he ever had the courage and the nerve to walk up that mountain. He had already had an encounter with him. And he already had a, a level of comfortability with the Most High. And many of us are trying to understand who the Most High truly is for the first time. And we're not ready for that. So as we progress forward, as we progress in this thing as a family, guard your brothers and sisters. Teach them. Stop beating them up. Because what we're doing is we're throwing in the reason why we're in this situation now that we're in with all these false doctrines and all these false teachings going on in the body is because we've allowed so much stimuli to happen to each other. When we first come out that we are stunning our growth and we're causing people to fall back to sleep. Um. Realize this, that the first people that left out of, uh, left out of Israel did not even make it into the land of promise. Those who were originally birthed out, it was those that were born in the travel, in the sojourning, that had a chance to make it in to Yashara, I mean, into to the Yashara, and to take the land and to further our story. It is my heartfelt belief as a teacher, as a brother, as a husband, as a father in this thing, that I don't want to lose. Listen, I do not want to lose anybody in the desert. I don't want to lose anybody in the transition coming out of her. And I'm not going to rush the process with anybody just so they can be up at my speed. It's a caravan. There are going to be people in the lead and there's going to be people to um, carry up the rear. So we can't rush. We can't push people to reach heights that they're not built to reach. You know what happened to Levi's first sons when they went in and offered strange fire to the Most High. They weren't a bit more ready for the position than, than, than a man in the moon. But the stimulation. I love y'all. Um. I'm grateful to the Most High for waking me up, um, for pulling me out, um, because I am the least of them. I wasn't worthy of this. So I'm excited each day that I wake up realizing that he's imparting into me more and more. And I'm not where I want to be in him, nor am I where I'm going to be. Realize when you're dealing with children or when you're dealing with babies, you don't take a newborn and put walking shoes on them and cause them and try to make them walk. You feed them with milk. And as they progress and they get ready for solid food, then you allow them to take on the solid food. And as they take on the solid food, they're going through processes of changing where their legs are getting stronger. Um, they're, they're crawling, they're bouncing, 
They're standing up on stuff. They're they're leaning. They're beginning to trust themselves. They're beginning to trust the stimulation around them. They're starting to understand what the look. They're starting to understand what the ruach is. They're starting to understand what life truly is. And when they finally let go of a chair and begin to walk on their own, it's always with stumbles. And it almost seems like they're trying to run before they even start to walk. But we're there to catch them. And we're there to nourish them through this. So as we wake up as a people and realize first that we are not Africans or African Americans, um, that we are the chosen people of the Most High, we are Yasharel, we are Hebrews, we are from the tribe of the tribe of Judah, scattered from North East Africa all the way into West Africa and from West Africa across the world. As we begin to realize that the story written in the scripture um, in Deuteronomy 28, the prophecy written in the scripture in Deuteronomy 28 was about us. As we begin to realize that we're starting to, that we need to learn Hebrew and um, as we begin to realize that we have to leave the church and leave those stimulation, them stimuli, that stimuli that we had inside of the womb. And as we walk forward in this thing, we begin to grow and we begin to, begin to mature and we begin to understand our purpose. We pushing people out on street corners that don't even understand their purpose. We got people taking up Hebrew names that don't even know what their names mean. Hell, I'm guilty. Not really understanding the fullness of the walk. We got people that are teaching, that have no earthly business being in front of anybody telling them anything, um, that have no understanding of Torah, have no understanding of the Ruach HaKodesh, have no true understanding of this walk, but they're leading people astray and they become wolves in sheep's clothing, teaching that sex is marriage and just all kinds of craziness, defiling our sisters and, and, and then defiling themselves. We, as a people, have to embrace the fact that Look, each day is a step. People are changing their diets. They're not eating pork. They're not eating the unclean foods anymore. Um, their eyes are being opened spiritually. Some people are still cleaning to meat, and other people are letting go of meat altogether. Um, and each person's walk is individually, and it's perfect for them. So we got to quit trying to mold people into who we are. And let them be themselves in this walk. And as long as their lives line up with Torah, it doesn't matter how they get to that point or how they get to the final destination or how they stand up before the Most High. If they stand up in righteousness, I don't care how their journey was. I don't care what steps they had to take. I don't care what barriers or what hurdles they had to face. I don't care what trials and tribulations they went through. As long as I nursed them when they were sick or when they were, when they were sick. I fed them when they were hungry. I clothed them when they didn't have clothes. I covered their heads when they didn't have a roof over them. That is what we should be focusing on in Yasharel. I loved on them when they were confused in script. You understand? I poured back into them. I gave of myself to my brother because this walk ain't just about me. If you waking up and this walk is all about you and your knowledge, then you ain't awake. And you ain't serving the one in the script. Oh yeah, my people suffer and die because of lack of knowledge. Yes, we understand that. But we are the Developing as, 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 as Hebrews, none of us are truly where the Most High really wants us to be. 
nor will we be until the return, until the gathering, until we are put back into the land, until we are in full inheritance of our language, of our script, of our of our dressing, of our diets, of all these things that he's going to return us to in the end day. We are so judgmental of our brothers and our sisters. And yes, I'm hard on on people. I'm hard on camp people sometimes because I see flaws. But there's flaws in me. More flaws in me than I could point my fingers at. So what is the goal? As we progress forward as a people, I believe that we need to have a meeting of the minds. Um, I believe that those people who are in leadership, we need to meet and we need to talk. We need to come up with an agenda where our voices can be heard here in our captivity. We need to come up with an agenda for us as a nation to cry out like the sheep do to the shepherd. Second Chronicles 714. You believe that you're Yasharel. You believe that you are the chosen people of the Most High. Then if you would seek his face, humble yourself, pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. Then he will hear our voice. And only then. Not cussing each other out on the street corners. Not defiling our sisters. We need to be focused on repenting. We need to be focused on getting ourselves clean. We need to be focused on getting our oil for our lamps. We need to learn how to be brothers first. Sons. Brothers. Husbands fathers and in that order we got people in Yasharel that are running once they accept accept who they are they're running to get married they haven't even learned how to be a brother yet they haven't learned how to be a son yet they haven't learned how to be a daughter yet and so what we're doing is we're passing on this, this, this layered cognitive dissonance in, in this this layered dysfunction, this thing that is raw and, and, and is not tov at all. And we're seeing our people led down so many different paths. One thing about Yasharel, when we left out of Mizraim, when we first left our original captivity, we left out as a group. And the only way we're going to be able to leave out of our captivity now is as a group. We need to focus on our repentance. We need to focus on getting cleaned up for him. And as we go into the fall feast seasons, as we get ready for trumpets and atonement and and, 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 and Sukkot, we need to start worrying about the, the wedding feast. We need to start worried about being the bride and quit trying to be the warrior. We ain't going to have to fight no battles. He's got that covered. We need to be worried about preparing and making sure that we're clean and have on the proper raiment. So when he comes, he will know that we were invited to the wedding feast and that he takes us back. And delivers us into Yasharel. Back into Zion. So that we can serve with him. In our proper position. As the priesthood to the nations. Not just the priesthood to Yasharel. But the priesthood to the entire nations. As he brings those people back. And they see the example of us. If you can't see 
that everything we do in this world is looked at and is copied and is admired, admired by all the other nations, even though they talk bad about us and frown upon us. These nations wouldn't be built up like they are without us, without our ingenuity, without our knowledge, without without the things that we have given to these countries, because we are his true people. And there's going to be a lot of people that will say, no, nah, y'all are Gentiles. But, you know, I look at them and I say, you don't know the script. And you the same people that think it's good to eat pork, that you can just pray over a, a catfish sandwich and and everything is cool. And then stand in the pulpits or stand out before people and say, well, you know, the, the Lord is the same today, yesterday and tomorrow. Well, if he said in the in the Old Testament or in the Torah that we shouldn't eat anything defiled, anything unclean, then what makes you think he changed his mind in the New Testament? He didn't. It's just a bunch of scriptures that people read out of context. And let's not talk about Paul pulling out the sheet, the sheet and the vision and Foods that are unclean and clean because it wasn't even talking about that. It was talking about a person. Focus on the most high, Yah. Yasharel, my family, my people. And let's try to get this thing right because there ain't no second chance. This is it. This is the final, <laughs> this is the final curtain call, man. This is the dress rehearsal. When he comes back, he's coming back just like he said he was in Isaiah, in Revelations, in Jeremiah, in Isaiah, in Ezekiel. He's not playing. When he comes back, he's coming back with a sword. And he is going to strike vengeance on his people. So I'm going to take a note from our brother. Yachadon. And I'm going to say, repent. Repent, Yasharel. For the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Repent and move forward knowing that you are a chosen people and a royal priesthood. One love. Shalom.